Welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for Slider Revolution 5, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create another type of slider. We've taken a look at hero sliders, we've taken a look at the ordinary sliders, and now we're going to take a look at the carousel slider. So we're going to go through the entire process of creating one of these, creating thumbnails, and customizing those thumbnail dimensions so we can get very specific and control exactly how this looks. If you're considering purchasing Slider Revolution 5 for a project you're working on, please consider using the link in the description below. It gives a small amount of money back to the channel and helps us create more videos. Anyway, let's take a look at how we can create these new sliders right now. As you can see, I'm in the admin section of my WordPress site and I've got the Slider Revolution control panel open ready. The first thing we want to do is click to create a new slider. That'll take us into the familiar section that allows us to choose the content source, name the slider, and choose what type of slider, along with a range of other controls that are specific to the different kind of slider or general to every slider. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this one carousel, just so I know what I'm working on. And we're going to come down and where it says select the slider type, we're going to choose the carousel slider. Now I could fine tune any of these other options below, but for this example, I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. I just wanna go through and show you how you create these sliders. And then we can take a look at customizing those in, in greater detail in a future video. So we leave everything as it is at the moment, just to go through and we'll hit save. That will then create new slider for us and take us through to the slide editor where we can start creating the individual slides. So the first thing I want to do is, with the first slide selected, is choose the background that I want to use. So I'll just click to choose the background, click Change Image, and I'm going to use this image of Lockroom Island. Insert that, and we'll just hit Save on that. We'll click to add a new slide, and we'll say Add a Blank Slide, and we'll add the second slide we're going to work with. So we'll do the same action again, Main Background Image, Change the Image, and this time we're going to choose this swirly background. And Insert, and we'll hit Save. So there's the basics of our new carousel slider. We've set the background images. Now obviously we can go through and create Im uh, layers on top of this and we can build them up in exactly the same way we can with any other kind of slider. So we'll leave them right now as just plain slides and we'll take a look at making some alterations to those in a moment. But let's take a look at what that looks like on the page so we can see what this slider looks like before we do anything else to it and how it differs from a standard slider. So if I switched over to the front end of the site now, and you can see there's our first slide, and you can see if we take the mouse over, we now get a hand icon, and that allows me to swipe this over to the left or the right to go through any of our slides. It automatically transition after a set period of time, same as the ordinary sliders do, but this gives us extra control. So let's switch back over to the admin and start making some changes to the way that this operates. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to give the end user another way of navigating around this carousel slider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the slider settings. And in there, I'm going to come to the navigation block. And we're going to choose, in this example, thumbnails. So we'll enable that. And as you can see, once we enable it, we've got a whole range of different options, which we can then use to fine tune the way that these thumbnails are used and displayed. So we'll leave the, the options to their default in a moment and we'll just hit save settings on that. We'll go back to our slide editor and let's just go back to our test site and take a look at the difference now with the thumbnail navigation enabled. So you can see now at the bottom we've now got two thumbnails of our slides and you can see as we mouse over we get slide and slides. We've got a pop-up name on there. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go and change that and then we'll take a look at changing the dimensions and how these thumbnails are actually displayed and how we can control the thumbnails that are actually being used. So let's switch back over and the first thing I want to do is just name these so we have something that makes a little bit more sense than slide and slide. And to do that you can see we've got these previews at the top of the slide editor. All I need to do is come into where it says slide, click in there and then I can change that. Obviously you want to keep these quite brief because you don't have a huge amount of space, but it's quite useful for the end user to have something that makes a bit more sense to them, especially if they can't necessarily see exactly what the thumbnail represents. So we'll go with that. We'll just hit save on there and we'll just come back over to the test site and refresh that page. And now you'll see that when you take our mouse over, the little pop-up actually has some relevance to the thumbnail that's being used. 
Now if we take a look at the thumbnails, you can see they are effectively just a slightly smaller version of what we're seeing in the background. Now we may not want that to be the case, we may want to control this, we may also want to change the size of the thumbnails being used. So let's go back into the admin and see how we can make those alterations. So we're back in the admin of Slider Revolution 5 and as you can see we've got a thumbnail tab that allows us to control various different elements. So if we click on that, you can see we've got a couple of different options available to us. We can choose the thumbnail or we can remove one we've previously created. And we can also control the thumbnail dimensions. So let's just start off with, let's just change the thumbnail image on there to something else. So we'll just click Choose Image and that'll bring up the normal WordPress browser. And as you can see, I've created two thumbnails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these. So we'll click on the one of Lockroom Island, click Insert. And you can see now that's put the thumbnail that I want to use in there as opposed to the thumbnail that is being automatically generated by Slider Revolution 5. Once we choose that, you can see we now have an additional checkbox or switch that allows us to choose that we want to use the thumbnail for admin purposes. If you take a look at this window at the top, once I choose that, you'll see it now changes over to the thumbnail image. If I turn it back off, it goes back to the full, smaller version of the image. So we can use whichever version we want when we're using that, and that'll be displayed throughout the entire admin section when working with Slider Revolution. We can choose to either use the normal thumbnail that's been generated or the thumbnail that we choose by simply using this, this switch. The other option we have available to us are thumbnail dimensions, and as you can see, it says from slider setting. So we can click on that or we can choose original size. So we can choose exactly how we want to do this. And if we take a look at the note by here, it says that if we want to change the width and height of the thumbnail, it can be changed in the slider settings, navigation and thumbs tab. So let's just hit save on this. Before we continue, I'm just going to quickly switch over to the swirl slide and I'm going to do the same thing on there. I'm just going to quickly go to the thumbnail panel, choose the image, choose the thumbnail that I want to use on there and insert that. And we leave everything else as it is for now and we'll just hit save. So now I'm going to switch over to the settings and we're going to change the way that the thumbnail is displayed. So let's take a look at the way it is now. Go to the test site, refresh that. So as you can see, it's now used now as thumbnails, but they don't look quite right. They're not square as we've created them. So let's control that. So if we go to the navigation tab and we just go to the thumbs, you can see where we looked earlier on, we had a range of different options available to us. And this allows us to create or control quite a lot of the different elements that are available to us. So if we come down, you can see we've got a thumbnail container size. We can control visibility and so on. So let's just change that. At the moment, you see this container width is 100 and the container height is 50. Hence, we're getting this sort of landscape effect. And we want to create a square. So let's set that to be 100 and 100. We'll hit save on that. And we'll take a look on the front end of the site. So we now have our square thumbnails. If we look at those thumbnails, you see they don't quite look right compared to the thumbnail that we created earlier on. So let's just come back in and if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see we've got preview image size and that's still set to 100 by 50. So let's just change that to 100 by 100. And we'll just hit save changes on that, come back in. Now watch the thumbnails at the bottom when I refresh. They now go to their correct dimensions. So just need to make sure you change the both of those. So if we go back into the admin, you can see we've got a lot of other options available to us. We can control the navigation styles. We can just control the visible thumbnails, how many we want to show on there, the space, the direction of them, whether they're horizontal or vertical. As you can see, if we take a look at the little display that pops up, it'll show us what any of these changes will make. So if we wanted to, we could easily set those in a position we want. You can see we can set the position to be inside the slider. We can do outside left, right, out the top, out the bottom. So you can see we can have them going down the bottom like so. We can choose an offset, both vertical and horizontal. We can align them by the slider or we can use a layer grid. We can choose whether we want to always show them, whether we want to hide them under a certain dimension. So if we enable that, you can see anything under a certain width, they'll be hidden. And the same goes for the hide over a set width so we can control how they look on different types of devices which again is a great way of setting things up to work across different types of displays so whether you work on a screen a laptop a tablet or a phone you may or may not want to have these available on there so you can see you can quite easily control a huge amount of the way the thumbnails display for our navigation inside our slider our carousel slider so let's just hit save on that 
Let's switch back over to the test site and let's take a look at some of those changes we've made. So as you can see now, we've got our slider and our thumbnails are now positioned below that. You know, you've got a great way of controlling this and Slider Revolution does really make it very, very easy. Now, even though we use a carousel slider, we still have all the same kind of level of control that we have in a normal slider or a hero slider. So we switch over to the slide editor, we can easily come down and we can start adding additional layers. So if you want to add interactivity, we can do that. If we just want to add text or overlay images, add buttons, objects and so on, all these things can be done. So let's just start off, just put a text item on there and we'll just put some text in there. And we okay that and we'll just quickly choose some style options on that so we'll give it a font increase the size of that to make it more of a heading and we'll do the same with the line height we'll give it a background choose a nice green color just so it'll Really, actually, let's go for yellow or an orangey color. Otherwise, it's going to stand out really badly. We'll set the opacity on that, so we put that to zero point five, so it's semi-transparent, and we'll put some some padding in there, just so it all sits nicely. And we'll position it where we want. So we'll just set that to the center, and we'll just align that to the center, center. Here we go. Now let's just choose an animation effect. Doesn't really matter too much what we're going to do. There we go. That'll do. So let's hit save on that. Now if we switch over and refresh our site, you can see that our pop-up displays quite nicely. We can control the navigation through using the links at the bottom, the thumbnails, or we can easily just drag this over left and right however we want. So that's the basics of working with the carousel slider with Slider Revolution 5. I hope it's given you an insight into how you can use this third type of slider. I hope it's given you a good understanding of the basic functions that are available and it'll get you started with creating your own slides. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content we add every single week. As I said at the top of the video, if you're considering purchasing a copy of Slider Revolution 5, please use the link in the description below to help the channel out and help us keep on making these videos for you for free. Well, until next time, take care.